uh, record button first. So, okay. Uh, let's start today's KSAP seminar. Today's speaker is Raymond Lamos, Raymond Lamos from Seoul Tech. Uh, he will talk about the Akulai sector in an SEO2 cross U1 extension to the standard model. Please start. Thanks for the introduction and uh, so talk, thanks for the, the invitation. This is the, the first seminar I, 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 I'm going to give uh, since I arrived here in, in Seoul. And today I'm, I am going to talk about a uh, work that we made uh, a few months ago. Uh, this work is about an extension to the standard model that is based on the SU2 cross U1. Uh, of course, times the standard model, the, the symmetry group of the standard model. This was done in collaboration with uh, Tzu Cheng Yuan, who probably some of you know. He was my, ho my host in, in Taiwan. And the uh, other postdoc, Tran Man Kui, who is right now working in, in Shanghai. And to give a, a small overview of what we are going to be discussing today, first, I am, I am going to motivate uh, Dark Matter and talk a little bit about something called the Lee Weinberg window, which is uh, something that has uh, driven mostly the experimental searches for dark matter in the in the few decades uh, that have passed. And also, I'm going to describe the, the model that we are going to be discussing today, which is uh, the gauge to Higgs doublet model. But this is a simpler version than was the than was one that was published some some years ago. Then I am going to talk about a few details of this model, mostly uh, focusing on the potential, the potential and the masses of the scalars, and also the, the the masses and properties of the vector fields. Then I am going to describe the parameter space that we studied in in this case, and the theoretical conditions and experimental constraints that we put on this param on this parameter space. Then uh, some results, and finally summarize the the talk. So first, what is the best evidence for dark matter? Uh, I, I think one of the best evidences is the, the CMB, the cosmic microwave background radiation that uh, has been measured. Uh, in, in this case, we can see the anisotropies in the, cosmic, in the cosmic microwave radiation that have been measured by Planck from the, space, uh, the European Space Agency. And here we can see uh, fluctuations in the temperature that have uh, an order of magnitude that is close to uh, in, in the order of millikelvin. Uh, from these uh, fluctuations in the temperature, we can calculate the the power spectrum of the of the CMB, which is the the red points uh, that we can see in this plot with their uh, with their error bars. We can see that. These points have been measured with very good accuracy. And uh, as we are physicists, we like to do theories. And one thing we can do is uh, take a model, in this case, take the lambda CDM, the, the cosmological model that has a cosmological constant and called dark matter. And we can try to adjust the parameters in this model to find uh, uh, the best curve that adjusts these, uh, these measurements. Uh, this, this adjustment is given by this uh, green line uh, together with the the error in the parameters uh, as you can see the adjustment is, uh, is has a very good accuracy and this can see this can be seen as an, an indication that the cosmological model is actually uh, very close to to describe the reality uh, some of the parameters that can be adjusted from this observation is uh, a component of dark energy that is close to 70%. Uh, we also have a component of dark matter that is close to 27%. And we have uh, another component, a uh, smaller component of ordinary matter, which is the one that we are made of, that is close to 5%. Uh, from these measurements, we can we can have uh, we can adjust uh, a lot more uh, parameters, such as the Hubble constant, but this. These other parameters are not, not relevant for the, for the rest of this talk. Uh, there are more indications of the existence of dark matter. One such example, uh, and one of the first, is the presence of galactic rotation curves that were uh, measured with very good precision uh, since the 1970s uh, by Vera Rubin. 
And one of the keys, uh, one of the key characteristics of these uh, measurements is that we find that uh, at very large distances from the center of the galaxy, the, the velocity starts to, to flatten out when what we expect from the from the observed matter is that is that these uh, curves start going down as the as we get far away from the center of the galaxy. This indicates that uh, the amount of visible matter that we can uh, detect is just one component of of the uh, of the galaxy. That we may have some other component of matter that we cannot cannot observe and is driving these. Uh, these ve constant velocities for the for the galactic rotation curves. We of course also have the formations of galaxy clusters that are made possible by the by the galactic interaction with sorry by the gravitational interaction with the, the dark matter. One uh, famous example of these clusters is the bullet cluster, which is thought to be uh, the collision between two two galactic clusters. Uh, and when we map the amount of uh, matter that can be inferred from gravitational effects, uh, we can see we can get these uh, green contours. We can compare this uh, this uh, density of matter against the observation from plasmas from X-ray, and we can see that they follow two very different distributions. And this can be seen as an indication that there is two uh, components of matter that largely went through each other. And we have uh, another component of uh, visible dark matter that has uh, electromagnetic interactions that, that stayed uh, behind. Uh, this, is, this can be seen as an indication that this is a component of, of dark matter. We, of course, uh, I mentioned that uh, the Lambda CDM, the cosmological model, includes dark matter. So it is expected that we have uh, called dark matter uh, in the in the history of the universe. So for example, uh, we need dark matter to explain the, the current observations on the large scale structure of the universe. However, uh, all this evidence is indirect at the moment. Uh, all of these are indications of the existence, but we have not had any experiment measure uh, uh, actual hints. Uh, sorry, we have not had any experiment measure act actually measuring this uh, dark matter. So in here, I am showing several experiments that have been trying to find uh, the interaction between dark matter, uh, most specifically WIMPs, uh, weakly interactive massive particles, uh, down to the 10 to the minus 46 centimeters squared uh, in, in interactions with nucleons. Uh, we can see that most of the experimental efforts have been expended uh, in these uh, window around uh, tens to hundreds of GeVs. And while this uh, space that is in the GeV mass scale has been largely uh, unexplored. However, we have had some experiments that have tried to, to, to limit the interaction between dark matter and nucleons in this, in this level recently. And we may have some more experiments that try to, to find dark matter in this, in this parameter space. And to explain why most of the experimental efforts have been spent in these uh, in these uh, tens of GeV uh, window, uh, we can talk about the Lee Weinberg window uh, or limit, whatever you, you want to call it. And first, this is because of the dark matter annihilation plays a central role in the origin of the of the relic density of dark matter. In the WIMP paradigm, we need a, a cross-section times velocity average to be 10 to the minus 26 centimeters cube over second. Uh, this is to obtain a density of dark matter that is close to the 25% uh, that I uh, show you that we can get from the CMB. If we assume that the mediators between the standard model and the dark matter sectors have uh, masses in the electroweak scale, then we can find we can find find some uh, behaviors for the this cross section. So, for example, if the mass of the dark matter is much smaller than the mass of the W, we see that it behaves as the Fermi constant squared times the mass squared of the dark matter. And if the dark matter is much larger than the mass of the W, we we find that it behaves as one over the mass of the uh, of the dark matter. This implies that we 
cannot have any any uh, any mass for the dark matter. We actually need to see, since we have to get this uh, this number, we we have to find the mass of the dark matter inside some window that is found to be from one GeV to order one TeV. However, uh, as I mentioned, this is assuming that all the mediators between the standard model and the dark matter are actually uh, in the electroweak scale. If we if we assume that we can find other mediators not in the standard model that can have uh, masses much smaller than the uh, than the electroweak scale, uh, then we can uh, lower the bound of the mass of dark matter down to the order of one mega electron volt. In this example, uh, I am showing that uh, the effect of having a, a dark photon in the in the in the annihilation of the dark matter. So we will get, we should get uh, an expression that looks like this, and we can see, for example, that one of the uh, most important changes is that we will have the propagator of this uh, dark photon changing the, the the cross section of the dark matter. Now, these light mediators, one one of these uh, mediators is the so-called dark photon, uh, open up a new new possibilities. So, for example, we can have uh, new channels of annihilation for dark matter. Uh, we also have a new sector with uh, it, its own experimental prospects, and we have uh, a lot. We should have a lot of new phenomenology uh, that we can also explore, and including its effects on other sectors. Uh, the dark photon is not a, a very new idea. Uh, it actually has been explored uh, since a very long time ago. And there are actually several uh, experiments that have limited the, the interaction that it can have with particles of the standard model. Uh, in this figure, I am showing you uh, the limits on the epsilon, which is the epsilon is the parameter of the mixing between the dark photon and the photon in the in the standard model. And this interact this epsilon affects the decay of the dark photon into into fermions of the standard model. So, for example, in here we, we can see that we have limits uh, here in the in the level of the mass of the the, elec the electron, and we also have here, and we when we open the channel of uh, decays into the into the muon. In here we have uh, the uh, collider based experiments and the beam dump experiments. We can see that uh, the beam dump experiments have measured. Have, have limited the size of this epsilon down to uh, the level 10 to the minus nine and uh, up to the mass of close to one giga electron volt. Uh, but we can also see that we have in here a small window that goes as low as uh, close to 10 to the minus two giga electron volts, uh, where the this epsilon parameter can be close to 10 to the minus four. Uh, now to explore this this possibility of having uh, a new uh, mediator, we proposed a gauge to Higgs doublet model, which is an extension of the standard model by uh, two two symmetries, SU2H cross U1X. Uh, the potential is very much simple, uh, mostly thanks to this U1X. And when this SU2H is broken, we find that we have an uh, C2 symmetry in the potential uh, that we are going to be calling H parity. So we are going to have uh, fields that are H out and H even. Um, these two symmetries uh, produce new uh, vector fields that happen to be neutral, different to other models that have uh, 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 charged vector fields. And in this model, we need to cancel anomalies via the addition of new Hebe fermions. In the part of the extended scalar sector, uh, we have two doublets of SU2L, two uh, doublets of the SU2 in the standard model. And these two doublets of SU2L have to be uh, put into another doublet of SU2H. So in here, what we have is a doublet of doublets. In here we have the SU2L doublets that are inside the SU2H doublet. We also have an additional SU2H doublet, which is this phi H which is a, a complex field. And of course, we have the vector fields that 
come from the the new symmetries. We have three uh, three Ws from the C2H uh, with coupling GH and one X mu uh, from E1X that has a coupling GX. And uh, these are the charges of these uh, new scalars under, under all the symmetries. We have the Higgs uh, that has to have the, the charges we have in the standard model, which is the it's a singlet under SU3, uh, doublet of SU2. And in the new symmetry, SU2H is a doublet, and we have the one half in the U1 of the standard model. And the new the new doublet is a singlet under the standard model, we have one, one, zero but it's a doublet under the C2H and is a one under U1X. And these, these fields can be expanded uh, in the usual way. We have here the G plus uh, in, the, in the top part of the H1, which is the Higgs uh, that corresponds to, to the standard model Higgs. In here we have the expectation value of the Higgs plus some, some perturbation around the, the minimum. And of course, we have the imaginary part. We have the H2, which is a, a charge Higgs and, and the neutral part. And we have the expansion of the GH with phi H, which is much, much similar to the expansion of the Higgs. We also have in here uh, an expectation value. And we also have several additional fermions. Since we put the, the Higgs in, into a a doublet of SU2H, we need to have you, we need to have more uh, SU2H doublets to to give masses to the to the fermions. So, in this case, what we what we do is to put uh, an additional right-handed uh, quark, an additional uh, right-handed uh, uh, lepton into doublets of of SU2H uh, for both the the uh, the, the up type right uh, quarks, the down type right quarks, and the uh, left, right handed leptons. So, by having this uh, as doublets, when we have the product of this against the, 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 double, the, the doublet of doublets and in the SC2H, the, the one I show you here, uh, we can obtain a singlet of SC2H that is uh, now a doublet of SU2L that is going to be multiplied by this uh, doublet that we have in the standard model. And we are going to have mass terms that uh, uh, the, the usual mass terms for the, for the quarks. And uh, in this case, we're going to have uh, mass terms for these uh, heavy quarks that are given mostly by the, their interaction with the phi H. And of course, we need to add several more uh, fermions because we need to cancel the, the anomalies. And this is the most general potential that we can write uh, using this these, uh, symmetry, the SU2L U1 of the standard model times the SU2H cross U1 uh, that are extra in this model. And this, uh, the, this potential is written in a way where you have alpha uh, uh, Greek, Greek characters as indices for the SU2H and Latin indices for the SU2 SU2 in the standard model. And the after minimization of this potential, we find uh, that we have this uh, condition over the the BEPs of the H1 and phi H that can be translated into these conditions of the parameters mu H and mu phi. And after this uh, symmetry breaking and minimization, we find that uh, we have uh, mixing between some states. For example, we have mixing between H, which is the Higgs in the standard model, and phi two. And we have also mixing between the top part of phi and the bottom part of the, uh, of the second Higgs. And we get these, these two matrices that are two by two. So it's very easy to, they are very easy to, to diagonalize we have the mixing angle that is given by this expression, which is just the product of the diagonal terms over, uh, sorry, the product of the non-diagonal terms over the, the, the difference between the, the diagonal terms. And we have the 
the masses that are given by this uh, very simple expression. Uh, in the case of this uh, MS prime mass, MS prime uh, mass matrix, we find that the determinant is zero. So we are going to have uh, one massless state. This massless state is actually a Goldstone boson uh, that is unphysical. And if we rotate our gauge, we can actually get rid of this, uh, of this field, which means this is not going to have a, a relevant, uh, this is going to have no, no effect on the physics of this model. Uh, we also have the massive vector fields that come from the SU2H and U1. In the case of SU2H, we are going to have an H out boson, uh, which is given by this uh, lab let us see W prime TM, which is assumed and rest of the W prime one and W prime two, prime two which is uh, analogous to the W in the standard model, except that in this case, this W prime is uh, neutral. Uh, this this cage boson receives mass from the H1 and, and phi2, and the expression for its mass is given by this number. Uh, in this case, uh, we expect this GH to be small, mostly because if if this number is too large, then we will have uh, uh, large effects on on several parts of the standard model. Mostly, we will have since we have this GH. Uh, here in the mixing of the C with other uh, other vector fields, if this parameter happens to be large, we will have several effects, mostly in the decays, for example, of the C to fermions and other things that we have not observed yet. So we expect this parameter to be very small. If this parameter is small, then uh, what will happen is that this the blue prime is going to be very light. Since this is a parity opt, H boson, this can be a dark matter candidate. We also have uh, the rest of the gauge bosons. We have a, a standard model like C that we also get from, from the SU2 uh, from the SU2 in the standard model. We have the other W prime three from SU2H and the X boson from the U1X. These three uh, fields mix uh, into these three by three mass matrix. Uh, this can be diagonalized either numerically or, or you can diagonalize it uh, analytically and get some complicated expressions. And uh, from the rotation of this matrix, we are going to get to, we're going to get three mass eigenstates that we are going to level as C, C prime, and A prime. This C has to be the the one that has been observed in several experiments since uh, a long time ago. And that has a mass of 91.17 GB. And we are going to consider that there is a mass hierarchy where we decide that this one is the lightest one, A prime. Uh, the C prime is in the middle and C is the, the has to have the, the mass I, I already mentioned. This means that C prime and A prime will play, will play the role of light mediators. Uh, just for, for the sake of, of in a name, we are going to be calling this A prime a dark photon. Even when, when in this case, uh, this dark photon uh, doesn't appear in the same way that it appears in other models. In this case, we don't have a mixing between the, this dark photon and the uh, and the photon in the standard model. But in this case, is actually a mixing between the the, the this field uh, with other field other. Uh, other vectors in the in this model. However, uh, in this case, we can see that in general, this this parameter, this a prime, should have a vector and uh, axial. Sorry, uh, yeah, a vectorial axial component. But we are going to talk a little bit about what happens with this component uh, later. And. From, for, for the masses of these uh, vector fields, if we assume that GX and GH are very small numbers, uh, and also that B is very small compared with B5, uh, we can ignore factors of three or more of them. And what we find is that the mass of the C is very close to the, to the mass of the C as if we were having just the standard model. Uh, the effects are, are going to be 
very, very small. And if we also assume that Mx uh, over B phi is very comparable to also Gx or Gh, uh, we can find expressions that are much uh, simpler for the mass of the C prime and the mass of the A prime. And something that we can conclude from these uh, sort of complicated expressions is that the mass of the C prime is going to be uh, larger or similar to the mass of the W prime, and that the mass of the A prime is always to, going to be smaller than this parameter mx. Now, uh, a little bit about the parameter space that we're going to be working with. Uh, we have the mass matrix for the mixing between H, the, the Higgs, and the phi 2. And we, can, we have the, the mixing angle theta 1 between them. Uh, we can use this mass matrix uh, 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 to relate the parameters of the potential with, with the physical masses. And the expressions that we can get is that we, we can relate the lambda h parameter with the mass of the, uh, the Higgs, that is the Higgs in the standard model, and the mass of the Hebe Higgs, uh, and the, uh, the mixing uh, between them. And we similarly can do the same to lambda phi, um, lambda, lambda h phi. And we can also use the mass of the uh, dark vector the dark scalar, the mass of the W prime, and the mass of the, the charge Higgs that is given by this expression to, to translate other uh, uh, potential parameters, parameters of the potential into uh, expressions that depend on the physical masses of the, of the fields. So this means that we can use these expressions to translate uh, six, 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 six scalar potential parameters uh, into five physical masses and one mixing angle. So we are changing all these uh, five, six scalar potentials, uh, scalar potential parameters into these uh, these parameters. Uh, this is going to be this is going to make uh, the exploration of these parameter space space much easier because uh, we can put constraints on these uh, on these parameters. The other parameters that we have are the uh, the couplings in the for the uh, gauge uh, fields and the mass of the Hebe fermions. The, of these parameters, we know that the mass of the Higgs has been measured and is uh, close to 125 times uh, sorry 125 GeV uh, with uh, error bar given by this uh, this number 0.14. And the searches for new fermions that have come with, with no results imply that we have the mass of the, uh, the Hebe fermions to be larger than order TeV. To study this parameter space, uh, we can separate the constraints that we are, to be, we are going to be using on the parameter space according to theoretical conditions. Uh, electroweak sector constraints, uh, Higgs properties from experiments, and also constraints on the dark sector. In the side of the theoretical conditions, we have vacuum stability, which is uh, the requirement that the potential must remain bounded from below, and also that the minimum that we have we, we find have to be stable, has to be the, the, the global minimum of the potential. And we also we require perturbativity and unitarity, which means that we, we require that every two to two interaction has uh, uh, couplings that remain inside perturbative limits. Uh, this means that mostly this, this limit will set what we will have as, as limits, uh, upper, and on, upper and lower limit for our scan. In the part of the electroweak sector constraints, the most stringent constraints come from the, the mass of the sea that has been measured with very good precision. Uh, we can see in here the, the number is 91.18 uh, giga electron volts. And the error bar is actually very, very small. It's 0 0.0021, it's 10 to the minus 3. And equally, equally the, the decay width of the sea has been measured very well. And uh, we can see that. The, the number is 2.49, uh, 2.5 uh, GeV, and the precision is also 10, 10 to the minus 3 GeV. We also are going to employ other measurements, uh, but they are weaker constraints. 
such as barbell for parasymmetry in the uh, electron positron collisions. And since we have uh, a mixing between the C and other, uh, other uh, vector bosons, we have to apply also constraints on the drill jam process that can be modified by this mixing. Um, we also know uh, several properties from the Higgs, from, from experiments, uh, mostly recent experiments in the LHC. We know that the mass of the Higgs is put at 125.10 plus minus 0 0.14 GeV, and we have to require this from our parameter space. Uh, since we have a charged Higgs and new Hebe fermions, these, uh, these, these two types of particles appear in the loops that affect the Higgs decay into pair of photons. Mostly the Hebe fermions will affect uh, both sides. In, in, in the case of the gluon gluon fusion, we will have Hebe fermions in the loop that appears in the uh, fusion between gluons to, to the Higgs. And we, have, we are going to have the, uh, both the charged Higgs and the new Hebe fermions in the decay of the, in the loop of the decay of the Higgs into, two, uh, into two a pair of gammas. The signal strength for strength for this process has been measured in the in the gluon gluon fusion uh, channel to be 0 0.96 plus minus 0 0.14. Uh, in this case, this is the channel that is going to be mostly affected by our model because the because of the effects we have from new new particles into both both sides of this interaction, and in the same way. The, these color charge new Hebe fermions affect these gluon gluon fusion, so we will have effects in every every channel that uh, that can be obtained from gluon gluon fusion. So, for example, one of the best measured channels uh, in, in this gluon gluon fusion is the decay of the Higgs into a pair of taus, which is uh, actually not not that much constraining since the the error bars are actually uh, quite large. We also have the constraints on the dark sector. Uh, I talked a little bit about this in, in previously. So in our case, we will have, since we have a dark photon, we have to require that this dark photon is consistent with, with the limits of the, with the limits that have been put into the, the usual uh, dark photon. We can translate uh, this epsilon that comes from the mixing of the, the mixing of the dark photon with the standard model photon. In our case, this is going to be translated into the mixing of the uh, of the dark photon to, to, to the rest of the of the scalars. And in the case of dark matter, uh, we have uh, the null observation of, of uh, dark matter in several uh, experiments. So we also have to require that the interaction between the, the WIMP the W prime has to be uh, below this, this curves. And additionally, the plant collaboration has determined that the dark matter relic density uh, has a value of 0 0.12 uh, with a error bar of 0 0.001. So to expand on the part of the, the dark photon, uh, we have the dark photon that we lab labeled as A prime. This can decay into pairs of leptons, which is the way that we can uh, detect this, this dark photon. In our case, the expression uh, is, is given by this. Well, this is the usual expression for the decay of the, of the dark photon into a pair of leptons. Uh, in our case, this epsilon uh, is translated into this expression. Uh, as we can see, since this dark photon mixes with the C and the C prime, we will have a vector component and an axial component. However, for a very light, uh, very light uh, dark photon, this axial component is actually proportional to the uh, to the square of the mass of the dark photon over the square of the mass of the standard model C, which means that if our dark photon is very light, this is going to be uh, largely suppressed, and we will have uh, epsilon that is mostly uh, vector-like, which is consistent with uh, the behavior that we get from the usual dark photon. Uh, also, these both 
uh, vector and axial component, uh, vector and axial couplings uh, are going to be suppressed because of the size of uh, GH and GX that we require to be small, given that we have uh, several constraints on the on the C. Uh, we also have the annihilation of the uh, dark matter into particles of the standard model. That uh, is the, the, the how the relic density is created. Um, this process is dominated by the uh, annihilation of, of dark matter of W primes into uh, either C or C prime, and, and that then decay into particles, into fermions of the standard model. Uh, the expression is given by this very, very complicated uh, formula that is not, not uh, really relevant. But the important part that we have to note here is that we have these uh, B plus and B minus couplings uh, that are given by these, uh, the, these expressions. And here we have the mixing between the C and the C prime, uh, the O21 and O22. These are components of the mixing matrix. And one important thing is that we have in here the propagators of the of these C and C prime. Uh, one, one important thing is that, for example, we, ca we have the possibility of having resonances. In the case of C prime, if C prime is light and is close to twice the, the mass of the W prime, we can have resonance that can enhance this annihilation and can make possible to have uh, the correct relic density for the W prime, even, even when this W prime is uh, on the order of uh, giga electron volt. And of course, we have uh, the limits on direct detection of, of dark matter, and that they are given by the interaction between dark matter and the quarks in the atomic nucleus. Uh, in this case, all the processes are mediated by C, uh, C prime, and, and the dark photon. Uh, we can write the following uh, effective Lagrangian that, as you can see, uh, we have integrated out the, uh, the, the mediator, and we, we have this expression. This goes as 1 over the mass squared of the mediator. So uh, this is going to be suppressed for the heavier mediator, such as the mostly for the C. And uh, this is going to result in a dark matter proton cross-section that is given by this, this expression. Since our mediators are vector, uh, vector bosons, we have to consider uh, the possibility that we have a, a, a spin violation, and we have to include factors for proton and, and neutron, and we have to account for these, uh, this difference by using this uh, more complicated expression. Uh, again, you can see that in here we have the mass of the mediator uh, to the fourth power, which means that uh, we can expect the C, uh, the C to be heavily uh, suppressed as a mediator in this, in this, uh, in this interaction. For the methodology of of the this study. Uh, to find the parameter space, we are going to, to test uh, first the theoretical conditions, uh, the vacuum stability and the perturbativity. And to this, we are going to use to assign either the point, the parameter space point passes or fails the test. And we are also going to calculate the epsilon for A prime and C prime and, com and compare with the experiments. And we are going to also pass or fail this. And uh, we can calculate electroweak and Higgs physics constraints, and we can include this into a uh, chi squared. And we can use we use micromegas to calculate the relic density and direct detection that we can also include into a uh, chi squared. We can add, add this all these contributions to the total chi squared, and we can decide on a prior, which is use or, or uh, scan ranges. Uh, we can pass them to, to EMC, which is going to take care of sample all the, the free parameters. So our parameter space uh, is composed by uh, eight dimensions. Uh, we have we are going to pass this uh, eight-dimensional parameter space to 
to test on theoretical constraints, the Higgs physics. Uh, we are going to calculate our mother constraints using micromegas. Uh, the dark photon constraints are the and the electroweak precision tests. A lot of this goes into EMC, which takes care of, of sampling the parameter space. So in the end, we are going to have a sample of several points that uh, follow more or less follow the distribution of the of the of these constraints. So a few uh, some results that we get from this from this study is that we have a correlation between GH and GX that uh, tend to be uh, very similar one with the other. Uh, in here we have uh, limits on the uh, on on this shape mostly because of the if we get. If we make them very different, if one of them is very small, very small or very large, we can get we cannot get the correct relic density. Either if one of them is large, uh, it is possible that we we will get uh, too much annihilation, and we will get uh, we don't we will won't get uh, enough enough relic, relic density, or we on the on the other hand we could have also. Uh, not enough annihilation and get uh, too large uh, relic density. So our best uh, region to, to, to predict this uh, relic density is given by this area that is also uh, limited on the, on the above by direct detection on and below by uh, the, the coupling between the dark, dark photon and the leptons. And here we have the constraint uh, in the MX and GH space. Uh, similar to here, GH cannot be cannot be too large because the uh, MX cannot be too large because we could have we would have uh, too much uh, relic density, and we have also this funny shape in here because of the constraint on the on the dark photon. One one thing in here uh, that you can see is that we have these uh, green and red points marked in here. Uh, this is because we also applied model jet constraints on our parameters, and we we use these two two points to 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 study how many uh, mono jet events we will get for this model. However, the result was that the amount of mono jet uh, events was much much lower than even than the background of the standard model. So the these mono, mono jet points. Uh, these these points uh, that were used to to test uh, monojet are actually not not very important. It's mostly just a test for consistency. What's the unit for the MX mass? Excuse me. What's the unit for the MX mass? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the unit is uh, GeV. Okay, sorry, I forgot to put it. So one one thing uh, that we can note in here is that all this shape is given by uh, the constraint on A prime. Uh, we can see by comparing this this figure to this, we can see that this this cavity in here is mostly caused by, uh, by the constraint from LHCb, which uh, heavily constrains a dark photon above. Uh, a mass of 0 0.2 GeVs, mostly when the interaction is on the level of 10 to the minus 10 to the minus 4 uh, for the coupling epsilon. And we can also see that we have close to here we have Pavar, uh, NA48, we have NA64, and we have a, a 141. And here we have also the, the constraint from Nucal. And in here we have the constraint from large, uh, large relic density. So one thing that is interesting in this case is that difference to different to other models, uh, we cannot have this epsilon, this coupling, we cannot have uh, arbitrarily arbitrarily small because this this parameter epsilon is related to uh, to GH, and if GH happens to be very small, uh, we will have uh, relic density. We we won't have enough annihilation of dark matter, which will be translated into uh, relic density that is very large. And uh, 
since we have the limits from the experiments on the dark photon, uh, we obtain that we have both uh, lower and upper limit on, on or couplings. And we also have the limit on direct detection. Uh, in, in, this, in this plot, we are showing the uh, allowed one and two sigma parameter space. And we are comparing with experiments such as CREST 3, uh, dark side 50, and SIN and 1T, which happen to be here uh, up uh, above one GeV. And we expect that uh, in the not so distant future, we can have uh, experiments such as super CDMS, uh, CDX, and USG that can probe uh, lower masses for dark matter and that, that can probably reduce the parameter space uh, that we have in here. And also in the case of the dark photon, in the future, we may have experiments such as Bell 2, uh, Awake, and NA64 uh, with a total of uh, 5 times 10 to the 12 electrons on target that can uh, more or less cut in half the, the parameter space of this, of this model. And the individual distributions of the, of the parameters, in the case of GH and GX, we find that they follow very similar distributions and actually they peak uh, in very similar places, close to 10 to the minus 4 for both of them. Uh, we also have the distributions for the mass of the W prime and the, and the parameter MX. Uh, we can see that the mass of the dark matter is mostly distributed be between 10 to the minus 1, uh, 10 to the minus 1 GV and, and 1 GV. And uh, the parameter MX uh, is actually around 10 to the minus 1. So to summarize, uh, dark matter is very well motivated, but we have a still to detect. We have we have a still we still need to detect it. The current observations uh, have some space for more theoretical possibilities, but also the current popular options uh, have been severely constrained. Uh, in this project, we took advantage of uh, an extender gauge sector in the gauge to Higgs doublet model uh, to enhance the annihilation of a light dark matter candidate with a C prime mediator. We also have an A prime photon, uh, dark photon, which is crucial for the direct detection of dark matter, which is mediated by, by the lightest, uh, lightest mediator. And we can see that it's actually very well placed for discovery in near future experiments. Uh, it, it is expected that uh, several experiments will reduce the, the available parameter space for, for dark photon and hopefully also for, for dark matter. And thanks for your attention. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for the nice talk. And let's bring it up for questions. Any question or comments? Yeah, I'm interested in the photon, dark photon uh, mixing. If I understand correctly, you have kind of an effective epsilon, but you did not put in the usual f mu nu, f prime mu nu term in the in the Lagrangian at uh, tree levels. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, this epsilon mostly comes from the the mixing between the the dark photon with the the, the other uh, gauge gauge vectors, the c and the c prime. But uh, you, your symmetries would allow you to have the usual kinetic mixing term, right? No, I think, I have not checked, but I think probably in this case, we, we won't have it at three level. No, but how is it, why not? I mean, it's just, if you've got two U1s, no? Or is it, I mean, okay, you would, uh, you, you should introduce, of course, not uh, directly with the photon, but you would use the U1 hypercharge and your U1x, I think you called it. But this term you can't uh, forbid, no? Yeah, yeah. I suspect that if, if we introduce, it's probably, it's probably just going to be a displacement on, on the current, on the current epsilon. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, essentially you, you shift it. And I think this is particularly relevant because I would expect this to be, to get generated at one loop because you've got fermions that are charged under both uh, hypercharge and U1x, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can easily make a diagram where you have a loop with a, uh, yeah, just a fermion loop with a, 
uh, B boson from the standard model attached to one side, and then your U1X uh, gauge boson attached to the other side, and that will give you an epsilon of 10 to the minus three or 10 to the minus four um, or so, depending on. Now, yeah, okay, maybe it's smaller because your gauge couplings are fairly small. But anyway, you will have this contribution here. So I think you you can't uh, you can't ignore this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suspect that it, it will be interesting to look into that. But yeah, as you say, it's probably it's most likely it's probably going to be smaller than the, the other contribution from the mixing mm -hmm. between the the C and C prime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree because yeah, it's suppressed by your um, uh, by your gauge couplings. So, uh, yeah, and then just, I mean, to, to be nitpicking, uh, you say your epsilon is bounded from below. So if, uh, if you are, uh, yeah, in principle, you could always put in then this mixing at a tree level uh, and tune it in such a way that you, that it cancels the other contribution and you end up with 10 to the minus 10 or so. So I think in principle that's possible, but of course it would be horrible. <laughs> I mean, aesthetically horrible. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that sounds very interesting. Yeah. Um, one question you were discussing here, the bounds uh, with respect to the A primes and Z primes, uh, but you didn't mention much any bounds from your additional fermions. Uh, how heavy are they chosen? Uh, in this case, we, we fix the, the hippie fermions, we fix uh, three, 3 TeV. So, okay, so they, they are made very heavy and therefore you yeah, yeah, avoid yeah. any uh, direct constraints from uh, from fermi uh, from searches for those fermions, I see. Yeah, yeah we, we use practically use integrate them out and don't, don't think too much about that. Other questions or comments? Yeah, I've, I've got another one. And at some level, your model reminds me of the old left-right models where you also have a new uh, SU2. Um, so one difference, I see you've got another U1 in addition. That's certainly not there, but is that the only difference or how else uh, yeah, I, is your model different from the left-right models? There's probably also something about the symmetry breaking that's not the same. Yeah, the, the symmetry breaking is, is not, not exactly the same. We also have the, uh, so we have the, the two doublets in, in a doublet. Uh, when we do the, when the symmetry breaks and uh, the SU2, the SU2 vectors uh, acquire masses, uh, actually our, our W prime, the, the one that is analogous to the W in the standard model, in our case, it's not it's not charged. It's, it's neutral, and that's why we can have we can have this W prime to be the uh, dark matter candidate. Uh, well, I think the W right and the left right models would also have, or there should be one that's similar. But I guess the yeah the most obvious difference will be in the in the Higgs uh, assignments, as you said. Because yeah, yeah. I think your your standard model Higgs is part of a of a di, di, bi doublet, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And in the left right models, probably this is yeah, okay. It depends. No, yeah, okay. I can, I can look up the other models if I need the details. Other questions, comments. Uh... If there's nobody else, I can uh, jump in with, a, with uh, uh, another one. I'm wondering about further loop corrections in the electroweak sector. So essentially SDU electroweak precision observables and also radiative corrections to the, to the Higgs mass. Have you looked into these or is there a reason why they shouldn't be important? In the case of uh, electroweak corrections to the for example, to the Higgs max, mostly we don't we don't include any uh, one loop corrections to to most of the stuff. So, for example, in the case of some some uh, 
constraints in the in the in the electro weak precision are actually very subleading. For example, we use the uh, power forward symmetry and and the drill jam, but actually they are very uh, very much smaller constraints compared to the to the mass of the sea and the, the and the and decay with it. And even in the case of the the decay with it of sorry the mass of the sea, uh, we attempted to look at uh, the effects of uh, loop corrections, but we also didn't find uh, uh, much difference between between including loop corrections and not, not including them. But aside from that, we we didn't consider other other loop corrections in in, in other places. I mean, with all the new particles that <laughs> can can go around in loops, I don't. Uh, it, it's not obvious to me why you wouldn't have huge corrections to the row parameter and or t or <laughs> whatever else there is. Uh, this precision observables. Yeah. I suspect that is mostly because we most most of the new most of the new particles are uh, very very heavy, such as uh, for example the new heavy fermions, which are uh, the ones that mostly appear in, in several loops, are uh, order T D, and uh, we also from them don't don't have this much. Uh, even when we have a lot of them, we don't we don't have uh, a very big contribution, and in in several places, mostly for example, we use the uh, the loops. We, we constrain these loops in in uh, observations of the decays of the Higgs and the gluon gluon fusion, and uh, we we have limited these 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 loops. Uh, Actually, a lot mostly mostly because of the gluon gluon fusion, uh, the, the 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 decay of the Higgs into pair of photons, which has uh, sort of has has all sort of very uh, has been measured very very well. So I think most most of these loops have uh, actually subleading effects. And all the all the new scalars and and gauge bosons, or I mean the light stuff, doesn't doesn't enter there anywhere. And yeah, correct you... the W mass or the Higgs mass or or whatnot. In the case of the Higgs mass, I I'm not sure. We have not checked. You should probably we should probably try to check, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. In this case, I, I, I'm not sure what will be the effect of, of this, mostly of the new, the new scholars in, in, in Higgs or other, other places. Mostly, yeah, mostly in the scholar sector. I think we, we did not explore this part in detail. Okay, thanks. Sorry, but aren't the corrections you get from the uh, scalars um, and from the new gauge bosons basically all proportional to the uh, to the mixing angle? The the corrections from the the gauge bosons, yeah, most of them are proportional to uh, to gh and gx, but gh and gx are mostly uh, similar sizes and. In the case of the scalars, uh, the scalars not not all of them. Uh, they they should be proportional to the to the mixing angle. In this case, the the theta one that we have, which is the mixing between the the Higgs and the and the heavy Higgs. I see, and th uh, this mixing angle is not small, right? The what? Uh, this mixing angle is not uh, not very suppressed, right? Uh, no, the, the 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 one in the in the case of the, the the mixing in the case of the 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 gauge bosons is is very suppressed because mm -hmm. of the because of the the very precise measurements on the on the C, the DK and the and the mass, but in in the case of the in the case of the uh, the scalars is not the precision is not not that strong. 
I see. So, so basically, corrections which come through that mixing angle, uh, that would be a source where you could also have contributions uh, at at one loop, which could be could be relevant for electroweak precision. You, you. I see. Thank you. Uh, I see that the question in the chatting window, you can chat. Uh, okay. This is how do the exotic fermions decay in this model? The exotic fermions, uh, in this case, the exotic fermions are all, uh, they are all, uh, they they are all what's the oh h h o parity, so in this case they they don't decay they they actually if they happen to be like they could actually be dark matter candidates. Yeah, so the the answer is that they don't they don't decay. So how, how how about the um, colored particle? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Can you repeat the question? How so you have a um, exotic colored particles, right? Yeah. yeah. So do, they don't decay. No, no, they don't decay. They well, they they can decay into other. Uh, into other H, H odd particles. So, for example, they can uh, follow decay similar, similar to, similar to the, uh, similar to the standard model fermions. They can have uh, uh, decays into into lighter H two, uh, in, sorry, into lighter H odd uh, fermions. But uh, they. Yeah, mostly, mostly that's that's the way they decay. They decay heavier fermions will decay into uh, lighter fermions. But in this case, we assume all of them to be the same mass, so they so they just don't. In this case, they don't decay. But if we if we assume them to be sim different masses, then we will have decays between. Uh, we will have decays from heavy, heavier uh, fermions to lighter uh, H out like their uh, H-O fermions, similar to what happens in the standard model, but just this, this will happen in the in the dark sector. Um, can't they decay into standard model fermions and W primes? No, they, they can't decay into, into standard model fermions. Could you show the particle content again? This is this one, right? Then I guess uh, ULH can decay into UL plus W prime as a uh, Thomas. Commented. Uh, no? Which one? The U R U R H. So new fermion, the pattern of U R U R H can decay to U R plus W prime, isn't it? To U R U R and which one? U R H decay. To decays to U R plus W prime. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, is that right? Yes yes it's possible uh, yeah and it's I allowed see. by the by the. But let me think. Because... And uh, you are, yeah I I think yeah now now I think I figured out okay thank you. Other questions or comments? Uh, 
Uh, I see no more question then. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, uh, let's thank to speakers. Thank you for the nice talk. Okay. Thanks for the invitation.